Hi, I'm Charlotte Frasa, a first year PhD student in computational neuroscience. And today I thought I wanted to take you along in how to write a paper in a weekend. So right now it's actually the week before because I do think if you want to write a paper in a weekend, you kind of need to have the preparations ready. So I kind of want to take you through my whole writing process and how I manage everything and how I collect the resources needed for writing a paper. Because I think especially at the beginning of doing your PhD or maybe your master's student, and the first time you have to write a paper it can be really daunting and quite overwhelming so let's get straight into it so I made a list of the things that I usually do throughout the preparation of writing a paper and this is just during the research or during my daily tasks as a PhD and I think if you do these things daily the um, final product is actually quite easy to finish up so usually for writing I do have a daily goal so if I'm not stressed and I don't have to finish it in one weekend I just try to every day make like one figure because a figure that can be published in a paper actually takes really long to make and then usually I write one page about this figure so I try to find out what this figure means and what the resources say and especially because like brain data which is what I work with looks something like this so the meaning of these figures are quite hard to interpret or to place inside the literature. The second thing is to have a routine around writing. I think this makes it a lot easier so if you're leading up to a big writing project it's kind of nice if every day you have a small set of routines that kind of get you into the writing sphere. So for example, you work at the same desk every day, you drink the same coffee every day, and you already have all your writing tools set up. Because at least for me, this can be a really big bridge if I have to set up everything every day and have to make this decision every day. I kind of notice that I lose my motivation to start. And with writing, the most important is just that you do it daily and every day for a little bit. And then at the end, the final write-up of the big project becomes a lot easier. And then a final tip that I got actually from Stephen King and that's in his book on writing and I would highly recommend you read it if you're interested in his writing process because he's a super prolific writer. So in general Stephen King says that he writes and reads for five hours a day which I actually don't think is that much if you consider how many books he publishes but if you do it every day I think that's really the key so he says he even writes for example on his birthday or during Christmas so the thing he says is if you want to be a writer you must do two things above all others read a lot and write a lot there is no way around these two things that I'm aware of no shortcut I'm a slow reader but I usually get through to 70 or 80 books a year mostly fiction so this is probably pretty insane but I do think it's true and you can also definitely apply this type of narrative in research so how you become a better research paper writer is also by reading a lot of research papers because the structure of research papers is very particular and also different fields have different traditions into how they write up their papers so I personally try to read about one paper a day and I take my weekends off but one paper a day so that's about five papers a week and most of the time I actually read a little bit more than that and that's just because so much new research is coming out every day in neuroscience. If you're curious for what type of papers I read and what type of papers I recommend in neuroscience, I do have a weekly newsletter and I usually talk about the papers that I read that week so you can also subscribe on there. Okay, so this is just the general things that I do throughout the PhD to make the final write-up a bit nicer but now it's the night before actually, the weekend that I want to write up everything and I also usually have a routine for that that makes the weekend writing a lot out, uh, easier because I do usually have all these figures I already have some of the resources but I've not written any part of the paper yet so what I do the night before is I make a planning for the weekend so I decide on what time I want to start and what time I think I will approximately finish so one thing I usually do and which I recommend is to start really early um, that just works very well for me because the earlier you start the earlier you can finish so I usually start around 7 6 30 to around 7 um, even in the weekend and I usually don't write in the weekend I do think I have to say this this is kind of because I want to finish this before Christmas and then the first thing I do is that I write just to away and sometimes I do find it helpful to put a Pomodoro timer so I put a Pomodoro timer for around 30 minutes and then take breaks of around five minutes and I do a cycle of four Pomodoro timers and then I take a longer break 
and I do that two times and then afterwards I do like to go to the gym just to kind of refresh and then I continue writing and I think this type of writing is actually quite easy to do because it's very structured so normally for more creative writing I wouldn't recommend to write beyond five hours I think afterwards there's only bad stuff coming out so after you made your schedule and you noted down full list of all the tasks that need to be completed which I'll put up here for my paper the first thing you have to do is to know what format you're gonna write in and that is because different journals require different formats and different word counts and they're very strict about it so if you don't know this beforehand you can waste a lot of time and the likelihood is quite high that you will have to resubmit your paper to multiple journals because that's just a research cycle so I'll give here an example of um, nature this is one of the nature journals biological psychiatry and that's because I just submitted a paper here so I know the um, format quite well. So usually they have a word limit. I think for this one it was around 4,000 words, but I'll put it up here. Usually you know what kind of audience you also will write for if you pick the journal. So for example, I know biological psychiatry is a bit more general than some of the other papers in neuroscience. It's not as specified. So it could be that my paper is read by geneticists, by neuroscientists, by psychologists. So it's quite wide. So I also need to write it with the idea that I'm writing for a more general audience. And also they they have for example specified the amount of figures so for nature it's usually around six figures and I think in general it's usually around six figures there's also the headings are already listed in nature papers so which headings you must include so for this nature journal you needed to write a structured abstract and that is a little bit different than a normal abstract so again just check for your particular journal what the format is that will save you a lot of time and just keep this in the back of your mind as you're writing your paper so then usually what I already have ready at this stage is I do have my results ready I have the figures that I want to include ready maybe I need to remake them a little bit or increase the resolution for example 300 dpi is for most papers keep that in mind but I usually have all of these things ready then for the literature review because I've usually already read quite a lot before starting to write my paper I don't need to do an excessive literature review especially when I'm showing results what does happen though is sometimes I of course need to think about if I write up a result like how do I interpret this and then sometimes I do need to do another little deep dive into the literature and that's especially for the discussion but I'll talk about that later and finally I usually already have my narrative pretty much ready and that's because before I write it down I've usually already discussed the results with my colleagues because if this is not the case and you start writing it up and then you send it out to reviewers it will most likely get rejected straight away so I would definitely recommend before you start any type of writing of your paper to have discussed it with some trusted colleagues or some other experts in the field to know if your results make sense if they've already been found because this happens quite often as well that you find find something that's perhaps interesting to only find out a week later that it's already been published in another journal. So then secondly, now I will start how I actually start my writing process. So I started really early, as you can see here. So the first thing I do is usually I make an outline. So for me, this sometimes looks a little bit different than some other people that I know, because I don't really think super strictly in work. So the way I make my outline is I first actually make a list of the figures that I 100% want in the paper. So that's usually the top six figures or the top six tables or results that I think are most important for the story and then afterwards I usually draw up a mind map as you can see here and I kind of try to relate these results to each other to previous literature through two thoughts I have and then after that only I start to write out the outline and for me my outline is very flexible so I usually write something and then I change it a little, little bit as I'm writing actually or filling in the different parts. And then we get to the writing stage as something to always keep in the back of your mind as you're writing your first draft is that it's going to be terrible. I think I've never wrote something from the beginning where I was like, oh, this is so brilliant. This is so great. This can be immediately immediately published. I usually go through multiple rounds of review, rewriting, reviewing, before I even deem it slightly noteworthy. And that for me really helps with perfectionism or editing myself as I'm writing. So this is from another book on writing that I read and that's Bird by Bird, Instructions on Writing and Life. 
So they say, perfectionism will ruin your writing, blocking inventiveness and playfulness and life force. Perfectionism means that you try desperately not to leave so much mess to clean up. But clutter and mess show us that life is being lived. Clutter is wonderfully fertile ground. So I quite like that and I think it's definitely true. Just during your first draft, make a mess. Just write everything down that you thought of that you think needs to be included and just start writing it up. And Some other tips that I found really helpful for me is to always have an example of a paper that has already been written in the style you want to write in and a little bit on the topic you want to write in. So I usually just use papers from, for example, LabMates to kind of see how they structure their sentences. And this is not to say to like copy these sentences, but I think the way scientific sentences are structured is very particular and it's not usually something we read in general literature. So it takes a bit getting used to. And if you're non-native like I am, I do have a list that I found quite useful of phrases. So it's the academic phrase bank for from the University of Manchester is quite useful and this introduction se section to academic phrases from this other writing blog page which I will list down below and I think it's just nice to have a few sentences ready to just throw in if you're a bit stuck on how to structure a sentence. Another thing is to start from the inside out that's what they always say in writing class and I definitely agree with that so that is to write the results first. So I usually also have the results ready, then I write the methods because those two are just the easiest to write. And then afterwards the discussion and then the introduction because the introduction is the hardest and it's also just an introduction to your paper. So it's also quite important that it's well written. So that's why I usually do leave it to the last. So then a little bit on some of the tools I use. People ask about this a lot and I think I actually do it very simple. So I usually do write in Word. I've written during my bachelor's and master's everything in LaTeX, but I found for writing, editing and having multiple writers on the same paper, a lot of times people don't have LaTeX or they're not as familiar with it. So that's why I would personally now just use Word. Then secondly, I use Zotero for all my references. So Zotero is this reference manager. There are multiple reference managers. There's also Mendeley. I don't have a favorite. Another thing that I always use is ResearchRabbit. So in ResearchRabbit, you can import your Zotero library or your Zotero papers that you create, that you collected for writing this paper. And then ResearchRabbit will find other related papers that are very important in the field. And it will make this kind of graph that I find personally really intuitive. And it's kind of good to sometimes see if you missed a paper, for example, what's something that's really important in the field and that you definitely need to add in your discussion session or your introduction section. Something else, of course, that I use is ChatGPT. I think a lot of people don't really talk about this, but most people that I knew use it. But I do want to caveat this by saying don't just blindly use it because ChatGPT um, makes up stories that are very much not true. So what I use it for is to rewrite sentences. And that's because I, a lot of the times I have the feeling that a sentence doesn't flow very nicely. So I let ChatGPT rewrite it. So I do always ask it to be concise and to not use flowery words as I say it and that's because ChatGPT quite often uses very unfamiliar English phrases and I think research papers in my personal view should be written in plain English so don't use expensive words don't use your words you're, you yourself are not that familiar with because it's extremely noticeable and that's definitely because I've read a lot of papers that have been written partly with ChatGPT and it's really noticeable when someone just plainly puts it in. Another thing that it can be used for or that you can use it for is to ask if you're missing something. So I sometimes do supply it with a bit of text and I ask it be a reviewer and give me a critical review of this text ask me some questions and tell me if something is missing. That can be quite helpful to sometimes notice like, oh yeah, I missed this very important part. Um, it should definitely be discussed. Another thing that I use it for is to come up with more titles. So usually I have a title in mind for my paper, but something that I personally really like is to ask ChatGPT like, hey, give me 10 other titles similar to this title for a paper for an academic journal in this journal for example and then it usually comes up with some titles and some of them are pretty good so I would definitely also recommend checking that out and again don't use it for a literature review 
it does it's not good at literature review it makes up resources and secondly don't use it for writing full paragraphs it's really noticeable I okay finally so at this point you should have written your first draft and maybe even reviewed it but then you come to the editing stage or the first reviewing stages um so during the writing up as i said you'll probably come across quite a few missing points or missing dots and i just usually blank them and then highlight them such that i can come back to them during the review stage and during this stage i usually do deep dive again a little bit into the literature fill in the missing parts or for example quite often i don't quite remember how many subjects i had or what exactly the p-value is so all of these things i fill in afterwards also during the writing process maybe you will come across a few questions that you haven't quite answered with your results don't try to immediately answer them these could be research questions on their own so i would definitely note them down in a separate document or maybe at the end of the document and you can put them in the discussion so for example you say something like for future research we would like to explore x y and z but i do think it's very nice if you have a list of these questions because especially when you're thinking about your next research Research projects or your next paper these are questions you can start from so do note them down then if you have some time it is good to let your paper rest for a little bit and I usually do recommend a few days but as you're trying to write this paper in a weekend it is good to just take some time back and leave it for a couple of hours so go to the gym have some dinner whatever and then afterwards you will see it with some fresh eyes because I think Quite often we get quite attached to our own writing, even if it's pretty bad. So during st this stage, you have to be really, really strict. And I would just try to remove a lot of unnecessary words. So think of words, uh, so think of adverbs, for example, they're oftentimes not really necessary. Also words like surprisingly or notably, I know that a lot of people use it, myself included, but really think about, is it actually really surprising what you find? Or is it actually expected given the previous literature? And then comes the stage that you will send it out to your co-authors if you have them. If you don't have any co-authors, definitely send it out to anyone else. So try to think of your professor or other paper that or other people that also write papers. But I would 100% recommend having someone look over it and taking their advice really seriously. So don't get too attached to your own work and assume that they're probably correct in their judgment. So if they say, I don't understand this part or this part is too difficult, that doesn't mean they don't have expertise in that part or that they don't understand your brilliant writing. It probably means that you wrote it a little bit confusingly or in a wrong manner. And also something to keep in mind if you have co-authors is that a lot of times professors are really, really busy. So if you have a submission deadline, keep that in the back of your mind. Because for example, one of my professors, he almost has no time. So I have to assume that I can give him at least six weeks to look at the paper and putting pressure on him or try for him to change his agenda according to mine, that will just not happen. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you have a submission deadline that you give your co-authors enough time to look at your paper. So then I want to end on another note from Stephen King, which is I think really good for the editing stage so he says one of the really bad things you can do to your writing is to dress it up the vocabulary looking for long words because you're maybe a little bit ashamed of your short ones and i really like this and i always keep this in the back of my mind now also when i read other papers i think a lot of times people try to use really novel or interesting words which especially in scientific writing just makes the entire story even more unclear because science is already pretty hard and it's already pretty hard to convey your message in a clear manner so just try to use the words as you think of them because that is probably the best word you can use and to not look for expensive synonyms or difficult words that sound really interesting so on that note i want to leave you i will finish up writing my paper and hopefully send it out by the end of the weekend for a long review process i hope you found this useful i if you're trying to write your paper this weekend definitely let me know how it is going and what kind of challenges you face and otherwise see you next week bye